let no fad break this bread and butter bond as a light snack nothing could be simpler or more satisfying than a slice of bread and butter a combination that has been the staple of my diet for the better part of my 80 plus years on planet earth and now i am told by the dietary specialists and fitness faddists that bread and butter are bad for me bread because of some chemical that goes into its making or baking and butter because it is nothing but saturated fat or something along those lines which only leads to more fat around the waistline you have a fatty heart i was told by a specialist some 50 years ago when i was living in new delhi well i still have my fatty heart although i no longer live in new delhi and my waistline is as undulating as the hills upon which i now dwell stop eating bread and butter says my dietary adviser it will shorten your life should i switch to parathas i ask i rather like the thought of stuffed parathas for breakfast that's even worse she screams at me next thing you'll be wanting pure ghee to go with them so what do i have for breakfast no flour no butter no flour no ghee you can have dhalia what's that i ask i thought the dhalia was a flour dhalia is a form of oats they call it porridge in england scottish people eat it actually i remembered dhalia from my boarding school days in shimla when we used to confront it at breakfast time it was rather insipid stuff i recall and most of us would make it palatable by adding jam or sweetened condensed milk these things came in tins those days and the jams were all made by a company called j b mangaram i wonder what happened to j b mangaram's many fine condiments they disappeared by the late 1950s anyway the other day i found a bowl of dhalia placed before me at breakfast time as expected it tasted like sand organic of course dug up from the beach so i reached for the sugar bowl no sugar said my dietary adviser that's white poison so i reached for the jam pot no jam she screamed that's 50% sugar so i reached for the salt cellar no salt no salt if you take salt your blood pressure will shoot up maybe i could have some mango pickle just to give it a little flavor pickle is full of salt i grew rebellious and refused to eat the dhalia you can give me a plain chapati i said sulking my dietary adviser very generously allowed me a plain chapati when my adviser wasn't looking i helped myself to a little butter it looked lovely spread on that lovely chapati the front doorbell rang and my adviser went to see who was ringing the bell quickly i attacked the pickle bottle extracted a couple of green chilies tucked them into my butter chapati and hurriedly consumed the lot it made a great chili risol unfortunately i'd swallowed one chili too many and as a result i was hiccuping for most of the day pip 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 on at least two occasions my dietary adviser mistook my hiccups for the signal on her cell phone this only sharpened her dietary zeal and for lunch i was given pea soup and what may have been granulated sunflower seeds organic of course she left in the afternoon to give a lecture on healthy eating in one of our premier schools and i made a bee line for the kitchen and helped myself to bread and butter and strawberry jam and washed it all down with tea made with condensed milk 
at least it stopped the hiccups. Even when I was a kid, my grandmother did not allow me to enter the kitchen. She maintained that pickle and chutneys heated the blood and mince pies were bad for the brain. As a result, I would sneak across to our neighbour, a dear old lady who fed me meringues and lemon tarts, and I like to think that the things I have really enjoyed have helped to sustain me into a reasonably contented old age.